Welcome to More Business, More Life podcast. And today's guest is Seth Green. He uh, went from being an entrepreneur, working like crazy hours, uh, not being able to see the end in sight to finding the right way to systemize and build software into his business to now being on the road to working you know, less than 40 hours uh, a week, being able to be highly successful. One of the top podcasters um, out there has worked with people like Kevin Harrington from the Shark Tank and so many more things. And we're going to uncover like how he piece by piece built the business that he has now where he can be with his family and continue to create abundance. Let's jump in. Seth, so good to have you on the show. Thanks for being here. Thanks so much for having me. It's an honor to get to talk to you and serve your audience. I appreciate that. And there's so much. I mean, as you know, we love talking about more business, more life, hence the name of the show. And, you know, I know that you've had a lot of success, which will cover some of that in your life. And then being able to be a family man yourself and have the the life that you want, um, you know, being able to, you know, just a couple of highlights that I, I know of you, like having a leading uh, podcast, you know, uh, and not just by you, not according to you, but according to like NASDAQ and being able to have folks like Kevin Harrington, you know, the original, uh, one of the originals from the Shark Tank and so many different successful points. I can name numerous more, um, you know, but uh, with this success and family, like getting right to that, that bridge, how do you create this abundance, continuing to have success while you still have the life at the same time? How, how does that work for you? I think you've got to do it by design. I think you've got to do what Stephen Covey says and start with the end in mind. I think you have to build a business or a career that supports your lifestyle and your life and not the other way around because then you end up working 80 hours a week. You end up being a hustling and grinding it out and doing all those things that I would completely disagree with. I think that if your business is truly designed to serve you, you should work the least of anybody of your company because that's what your team is for. Your job is to build the systems that attract the clients and then have your team members deliver the results so that you aren't the one working a million hours, you aren't burning the midnight oil, and you can be home for dinner, go to every soccer game, every theater performance, every ballet recital, because those are, you know, the magic moments where life is really made. It's not in the, hey, you know, we delivered a great result for that client and that's wonderful, but that should support everything else. Got it. And, and and that makes total sense and something that I 100% believe in with you. And did, was it always that way for you? Or did you like, how, how did you, f f you know, have this? So, you know, did, was it, I don't know, how did it start? <laughs> no, I wish I had been, I wish I knew this now. I wish I had known this back then. No, when I started out, I did everything myself. I wish I had hired sooner. We now have an awesome team of 29 team members, but it started out as me as the only person as the solo entrepreneur. Yeah. And in the beginning, I couldn't afford to pay people. So I had to do it myself and I had to learn how to do it. And then once I knew how to do it, I fell victim to a fallacy that many entrepreneurs have, which is thinking no one's going to do it better than me. Right. I have to do it myself or it won't get done right. And I had to realize the hard way that even if they weren't going to do it as good as me, they would do it good enough. Even if it was 80% of what I did, it would still deliver the results the client wanted and the client would be happy. And I had to learn to let go. And it came out of an immense amount of pain. I would do a service launch and we would acquire, we would do a webinar, we would do emails, we would do social media advertising and podcasts. And then we would sell a whole bunch of services, a whole bunch of clients. And then the problem was I've made a big mess. And the more clients I'd be excited. Oh my God, we got all this revenue. This is great. And then, oh no, how are we yeah. going to fulfill and keep these people happy? Because I knew based on our previous unsuccess that several months later, three a certain percentage of them are going to be mad at us and say, you didn't do what you said you were going to do, even though you may have tried. So I had the, I, I escaped my business to go to a conference, um, which is one of the largest digital marketing conferences in North America um, that pre COVID I went to every single year. And I had the good fortune, fate smiled on me. I just happened to met someone at a networking sub meeting of that conference at a mastermind group. And they asked my favorite podcast question, which is what is your biggest challenge? And I was feeling really vulnerable and honest and didn't want to check any text messages from my team. Um, and I told him the truth, this total stranger. And he said, I can solve that. And I said, what do you mean? And he said, I had the same problem in my business. 
I built a software program that tells my team members what to do, who to do it for, how to do it, make sure they does do it right. And I don't have to micromanage the process anymore or do the work. And I said, oh my God, you're my hero. That's exactly what I need. I'm managing on Post-it notes, Microsoft Excel, Google Docs, Basecamp, Microsoft Project, none of it's working. Yeah. And I wrote the check. We built out this software program and it totally changed my life and changed my business to the point where we were able to hire a lot of people. We were able to take on clients and know that they were going to get the result and they were going to be happy. And it brought sanity back to our business and profits back to our bottom line. It's uh, it's so brilliant to hear. And it sounds like we have very parallel stories because, you know, I grew up in Silicon Valley. And when I started building my ad agency, I, I, this is in the nineties. So pre social media. So we had to have people with budgets so they could run 30 second commercials and broadcast on the radio and all those things. And the bigger the clients got, uh, which we got to work with like Apple and Intel and all these big companies, the, the more problems we had, just like you were, you were saying, and uh, so uh, glad you know, and I found my mentor through a conference too. So then it, like just life pivots and you start getting the information that you need. Um, and that is so brilliant that you found this, uh, this software. So are you still running the same software that you did back okay. then or is it, Yeah. Yeah. So. We have since expanded it. We have built, we build out a, I build out the service delivery system for every service we're going to launch. I handle the first client myself, build out the system, figure out all the steps. And then we, they're our beta tester. And then we, when I get an idea and then we will promote it. And once we know that it works and someone else can follow the system that I built. So I went from, um, and we started before, you know, in the, or in the early two thousands. So we started before social media. I mean, we started out in direct mail, so we didn't do TV radio, but we did direct mail. And so we have now got the software down to the point where I have learned to become less of a marketing junkie and always looking for the next social network and also looking for the next hot technique and stop worried about the tactics and became a systems and strategy junkie and yeah. said, before we ever figure out any tactic, the strategy has to be right. And we've got to have the steps in place to deliver and keep our clients happy and get them the results that they hired us for in the first place. I totally understand. I had a quick story popped in my head. I was working, uh, I started getting a few restaurant clients and then I, I met this restaurant con consultant and he said, if you want to know a restaurant has their stuff together, ask them what their food cost is. And if they tell you it's 22 point something or 19 point whatever, then you know they got their game on. If they go, oh, it's kind of around here, then you know it's a mess. So I go into this restaurant, they want me to do marketing. I ask them the food question and they say, oh, and I'm like, okay, we have to break down your menu, how much profit you have. And they got so mad at me. They're like, what are you doing? I We want you to run ads. We want more people to come in here. Come to find out because I asked those right questions. Every menu item was losing them money every single one. And so it was like, they were giving money away and saying, what would you like to eat? And then they were going and making it themselves. So, um, you know, it's like that as a marketer, if we know we're good at dry, if I would have drove traffic into their restaurant, I would have just closed just them. Faster. Yeah. I was going to say, you're just going to help them lose money faster it, it, and be done closed. They didn't know their you numbers. Know, that's the problem. That's is a big problem. It goes back to the systems, you know, and then as far as like the staff, this is a big thing that I find a lot of my clients have and, and people bring up all the time. It's like, okay, great. I've got this good business going. Like you said, you know how to do it. And then you're like, no one could do it like me. And then if they start to overcome that, they're like, yeah, there are other people or I can train them. Then they get bogged down in, oh my gosh, I'm spending so much time building the systems like you're talking about or training the, the, the folks. So how did you compartmentalize that? Because I suppose from the way you, it sounds in the story, maybe I shouldn't presuppose that you were still building your business while you were doing this in the background because you already had that revenue coming in, right? You didn't like close everything and say, we're closed until we build this new ride and then we're going to open it. So how did you manage the transition from having, um, you know, keeping the business going while well, you're building all these new things? How, how, how did you That's do that? That's a great question. Yes, we literally learned to build and finish building and fly the airplane while we were in the air. Yes, you are. That is an absolutely correct analogy. So no, we didn't close and say, let us figure it out first. We had to pay the bills. We had, we had people paying us. So we kind of did, it was a big mess. We kind of did two things at once. We did the old way that wasn't working all of the time, but worked some of the time while building, the, while frantically building the new thing, we built it for one service. Um, the guy who taught me this said, and, and who had this said, 
give me the service that's giving you the biggest headaches, the biggest problems right now. I said, oh, that's easy. I know exactly what that is. And he said, okay, we're going to build it out for that service. We're going to test it. Your team's going to run it without you doing a thing. We're going to make sure that it works. And then you can start building it out for every other service that you offer. And now I get a message from him once a week, like, hey, I see you're in the software building another system. That's awesome. Like now we got like 77 different things. And he's like, you know what? You could possibly eliminate some of those that you're not using anymore because you don't offer that service from five years ago because you know, or 10 years ago, you know, MySpace doesn't exist anymore. You might want to get rid of that one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's why. So then, you know, so was, do you think if you look back, was that like your last big growing? I mean, there's always growing, there's always little bits of pains here and there and you're changing and, you know, and obviously a lot of people know about change this year, but would you say that's like your biggest, most significant migration that you've had in the, in the history of your company now was like doing that first step of taking that first product while you're still running and having all the hiccups. Um, is that, would that be true to say, or, or. Yeah, that's probably our big, the biggest trend. I, I think one of the biggest transitions, it, getting yourself as the owner or CEO or founder out of the way and building a system that can run without you. Because before that, I had a job, a highly paying job, but I had a job yep. and it was a stressful, high performance, high produced job. Now, theoretically, you know, I, one of the analogies is if your business were a stock, would you buy it? Yeah, you know, which one. is a hard yeah. question to look at yourself as a business owner <laughs> going, huh? The only money we're making is the money that's going to me is my salary. We're not making anything above that. So an outside investor would say, why would I put money in something that doesn't have much to take out? I have no return. And then you go, oh my God, what do I have to do to fix this? So I think the first step is getting yourself out of the way and getting systems that can run without you. Because theoretically, you never see if you ever went pre-COVID, let's say to a McDonald's or a Burger King or a Wendy's and you walk in and you say, can I talk to the owner? They're never there. Right. They don't ever go in. They have a manager, managers, day manager, night manager who runs a place, a bunch of teenagers who work there. They never set foot in the place except maybe to pick up checks or right. sign bills, right? Right. That's a true passive investment. What's it? It can run without you. And even though we may have started as solopreneurs, the goal should be like Michael Gerber from the e says as you should yep. build a business that A, could run without you and B, could be sold even if you never want to sell it because it'll make your life a heck of a lot easier if you build it that way or fix it to be that way. You just nailed the point. Like often people, when they come to me, because I'm this more business, more life guy, they're like, I built this business. I'm on a treadmill. I can't get yes. off. And so this is the same. This is awesome. The conversation we're doing, because these are the problems that that we solve. And, you know, the one thing I was telling people, they're like, well, I'd like to maybe sell the business at some point, or do I sell? They're questioning the whole thing. And I'm like, well, the first thing you have to do is build the systems because if you are in the business, even if it is cash flowing, let's say it's making more than what, like yeah, sure. you were giving the analogy that it's just making enough to pay you. But what if it was making more, but you're still in it? Like you're still a cog. So if they take that gear or whatever you are, that part of the system is you and you take that out, the whole system breaks. No one wants to buy that because then they need to keep you and you, and then why would you sell? You're still in it. So the number one thing I always tell people to do, build a business that would uh, make so much cash flow and you don't have to be there that you would only sell it if you wanted that money to transfer it to some other business or to some real estate, or you just, um, you know, that would be the only reason. Otherwise you would keep it because every month it's giving you cash. <laughs> right. Because theoretically, if you could take yourself completely out of the picture, you don't need to sell unless you need a liquidity event. That's because correct. you could just be a, you could consider yourself the passive investor in your own business if you don't have to work in it. That's exactly true. So I love this big picture and you took, um, and you, 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 you bit the bullet, right? Because it really, uh, it takes uh, setting up that first system. It's kind of like, I, I also, if anybody has ever remodeled their house, when you if, you, if you can't move out, like move into another house or go to a hotel, you've got like that whole building the plane. You've got to like say, okay, we can't use the kitchen right now. We're going to fix that. Everyone else can use the rest of the house. And that's kind of how you run the company, but you've got to focus on, on that system. And then once you have that, then you can actually run the business, like you said, without you. And now you have over 77 uh, systems. Some may be used still, some may not. So this is uh, beautiful. And I think if you're, it, it really comes to, to fear, I think, you know, cause people are afraid that if they, you know, put, put that time in, what's going to happen, you know, like, was there any of that? I mean, I think the thing that helped you, I think, is you had a guide, but was there any, like, 
was there in that moment when you made that decision when there was there any bit of stopping you or it was like all and you're like you knew this guy had the answer and you're just like done sign the check or how, how did it yes. go no i was all in i said oh my god this is going to save us and give me back my sanity and reduce my stress level and make it so we can really grow this thing and not be scared that we're not going to deliver 100 percent of the time um so i i was i was all in when he said I had the same problem. Here's how I solved it. And I could, we could, we could do the same thing for your business. And I said, Oh my God, you're my hero. Sign me up. Perfect. Well, and then just a couple more questions on that. And then I want to move to a different uh, uh, section of this, but what um, is this like total custom or like, cause I know people are going to ask, like, is this, um, this was custom set up for your business through like a software developer or was it a baseline product offering? No. So it was custom built from scratch for us. Wow. And then it worked so well that we literally now license. So we, there is now a base of the software that could be customized from scratch for any business without them having to build the whole thing from scratch. So we literally, because it works so well, we started a sole separate software company called cloneyourselfsoftware.com, where we literally build the system for the business owner to have their software run the business for them so that they're no longer a cog in the wheel and so that they truly are passive if they want to be that's that's uh that's beautiful because I mean, out of my pain came something wonderful and i wanted to help others who are going through the same pain i counseled another a podcast production firm like a week ago who was having literally the exact same pain i had years ago when we built this and i said oh my god you're me three years ago three four years ago i can save you from yourself I have what you want that you don't know you need yet. Right. And it happens so often. I mean, and this is what I tell people in today's day and age, we have a world, a global workforce and technology that we never had before. So, you know, it's, it, it is, there's so many more options and, even one of my coaches, like my family is Italian descent and they moved, uh, uh, many of them, you know, they all, uh, now both my parents are Italian. So from different lines, they came in different ways. And some of them had very little money. And when I started meeting my coach, they noticed that I was using the old Italian coffee grinder, you know, and you can't see my hand around, but I'm like r- running the, you know, running this gear to grind my coffee. And you now can go to an appliance store and go, you know, in like yeah. seconds, grind your coffee. And it was like, you know, we get into these old habits or this old thinking. Um, and like you were saying, Seth, it's, uh, you know, you're, you, I'm the only one that can do it. And all these things that go through our head that are programmed. Um, and then now where you are, Seth, like there's software that we can develop that you've done. Now you're allowing people to clone themselves. I love the name. And you're able to make a difference in their life. And so it's like, why, why not? With where we are in the world today, we have more choice than ever before. And it's just a matter of, you know, committing, I think. And I don't know what you're suggesting. I would say for me my is to commit to yourself to build the system. Otherwise, like you said, Seth, you just have created yourself a job and then and a whole bunch more headaches. In some ways, it's better for you to go get a job because you don't have all the headaches. So, so what would you say is the one thing when someone's making the decision um, around this, you know, to bite that bullet, to train more people, to get the software, because that does take a task. But what would you, if you could share one thing, this is the last time someone would talk to you, what would you share for them to take this initiative? Well, shoot, we'll do it for free. I mean, we'll build it for, uh, just to get rid of the pain. Like our offering for that is we'll build it for you for free. We'll get it up and running. We'll have your staff run it. You'll see it works without you. And then once you see that it works and it frees up your life and gives you more life, then and only then do we charge you for it. So wow, I can't make it ridiculous. any more irresistible than that. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Where were you in my life like 20 years ago, brother? <laughs> a little younger. I know, right? Both of us. Holy cow. And I don't regret anything. I know that I had to go through all that. So I would even be here on this podcast with you. I wouldn't have the more business, more life show right. if I didn't know how hard it was. Cause I would look at everyone else and say, are you, what's wrong with you? Like, it's easy. Like, no, I had to see both sides, the yin and the yes. yang to be here with you right now. Absolutely. Um, so let's switch gears for, that is ridiculous. Maybe we'll come back to that before we end the show, but I, I want to come to the day to day. How do you, because it's, because this is another thing, we get passionate about our work. Many entrepreneurs, if you're founding a business, you're passionate about it. And hopefully even if you work for another company, you're passionate about it. And so what happens and what happened to me is it was easy to put in those extra hours because I did love what I was doing. However, I do love other things like my family, like going on trips and all these things. And um, so when it comes to the day to day, how do you how do you 
I know you were saying by design, but like specifically, how do you design your, your day or your week? Like, how does that look for you and your family? Okay. So I think there's I'm, a lot. There's, <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how to answer that question. Yeah, so let's go step I'm by trying, step. I'm trying to fire myself from as much as possible. So the first thing that we did once the software was up and running and it was working and then we built out systems for all of our services was to fire me from customer service. I yeah. shouldn't be building anybody's marketing funnel. I shouldn't be producing or editing their podcast. I shouldn't be doing any of the actual manual labor for lack of a highly skilled white collar manual labor in our firm. And then once I got out of that, then I needed to fire myself from managing the process. So I hired a chief project manager, taught her how to run the systems. And she's running, let's say 70% of that now. And I'm hoping next, we had some hiccups because of COVID, but I'm hoping next year we get to the point where somebody they're running 100% of it and I don't have to run that at all. Then that leaves the last role I've got, which is chief, uh, the last two roles, one which is visionary and coming up with the services we're going to offer. I don't, and building out those systems, I don't think I would ever stop doing that because it's the most fun. Right. Um, the other role is being chief marketing officer. Right now, I am our chief rainmaker. I probably bring in 80% of our business. So we're building out, even though we build marketing systems for other businesses, Shoemaker's Kid, right? We don't yeah. build them out enough for ourselves. So I'm literally, instead of doing it myself or having my team do it, I'm saying, again, outside investor mentality, I'm going to hire another marketing firm to market our marketing firm. Yep. and have them run it and have a predictable return on ad spend. Here's what it generates that they don't have to, that an outside investor wouldn't say, oh, well, it's because you're running the system that it's right. working. Right. They would bring in an outside agency anyway. So I'm going right. to do it before they could in my hypothetical world, hire an outside agency, have them run it. And then literally somebody else will bring in the customers. My team will serve them. Somebody else will manage them and I won't do a darn thing. If you, and so that's, uh, that's kind of, I'm trying going, to make a McDonald's out of it. Yeah. That's the 2021 goal is that, so that's your next stage to move the marketing and then keep the visionary. Like I, I I'm a lot like you, a creative side and, and I don't ever think I'm going to retire, but I definitely am going to do a heck of a lot less. Right. And then yes. be able, you know, and that's the, that's the key thing and you can still be there and then maybe you won't, maybe, you know, who knows what five or 10 years will take you. Maybe you'll find some other visionary and you're like, Hey, I want to go away for five years. <laughs> so, right. so you never know, but you can make that decision, uh, when you, when you get there. So do you have any, um, and thanks for that. So do you have any uh, specific tactics day to day? Do you like work like crazy hours one day and then take the next day off? Or do you try to work a certain amount of hours every day? Just getting nitty gritty because people, you know, when I talk to, you know, people like yourself and myself and other business owners, you know, um, I found that getting into those details helps folks because, you know, I, there's this one woman I've been working with now for a couple of years. And when I met her as an entrepreneur, she was getting up in the morning and working until she couldn't work anymore and then going to bed. And now, you know, it's gotten to the point where we're talking about like, what does your calendar look like? Where, where do you plan your fun? How do you start to do that? So how do you look at your calendar in that way and start boxing when you're going to work and when you're not, yes. or how, how do you go about that? Yeah, absolutely. So I, right now we're recording this during COVID. So my kids are home um, on remote school. And that changes every couple of weeks because we're in New York. So it's always different. Um, so that's interesting. So I get up and do my morning routine, my personal development morning routine before anybody else is awake most of the time. Then um, in terms of work, yes, I will set the schedule in advance of, hey, I'm going to do X number of podcasts this week. I'm going to do X number of sales calls this week. I'm going to do three webinars and bring on clients. I'm going to work on our new deliver, our new system for the new service. Right. Um, so that's all plotted out. And my goal, which I don't achieve all of the time, but pretty much 80, 90% of the time is to be done before dinner. Right. Um, and then of course my kids, my son mostly is the one who will interrupt. He's 13. He's mostly the one who will interrupt me during the day. Um, Cause right now we're quarantined. So I'm working from home as opposed to at the office. Right. Which works for my wife because he will interrupt with math questions that she can't answer or doesn't want to try and figure out and says, your father will answer that in two seconds. Go interrupt him and hand him your <laughs> algebra. Um, so before COVID, I was taking driving my son to and from. He's a top so elite soccer goalie. So I was driving him to and from practices four or five days a week. 
Uh, my daughters are in musical theater. They took after me. So I was picking them up, draw, running them around. Um, so I always made time for that. That was a priority. And I made sure I was at every practice, every game, every show. Um, so that's kind of my schedule was defined as in this is when I'm starting. This is when I'm ending. Whatever has to get done has to get done in that time frame because it's not spilling over. Right. And then, so then how did you do that? Like when, when stuff was spilling over, like what, how do you manage that? So you either, so my wife will tell you, I, I did work outside the hours at times from home, from a laptop, or I would take a phone call at a soccer practice and talk to someone while watching practice. Um, so I was able to pull that off. And then there are times where it just had to wait till the next day. I mean, I'm not a brain surgeon. We're in marketing. I've only had one true marketing emergency in 20 years, everything else, nobody's going to die literally mm. unless they're on shark tank right now. And there's about to get 2 million hits to their website. You yeah. know, it could wait until the next day. And right. part of that was my fault. It was my belief that I had to take the answer the phone whenever it rang and I had to talk to them. And if they were upset, I had to make them feel better right now. And when I drew those boundaries and told our clients, they actually respected it more and said, right. good for you. I was wondering when you were going to do that. It's about darn time that you spend, you know, take care of your family better, take care of yourself. And I don't need you. To, I know I'm on a different time zone than you. I don't expect you to answer. Like somebody the other night texted me. It was 11. It was 1030 at night. And I said, I'm going to bed. Can this, because they said, call me ASAP. And yeah. I said, can this wait till tomorrow morning? And they're like, oh, I didn't think you would see it until tomorrow morning. Of course, you're not going to call me at 1030 at night. Yeah, they, they, yeah, that's exactly. It. Do you? Uh, so, how do you um, specifically set those expectations with the with the client? Um, you know, speaking. We tell of that. them up front when they hire us. Now, I learned the hard way. I used to be guilty of over promising and under delivering when I had a mess because I was desperate for the sale. And now, I've been working for three years on under promise, over deliver. Yeah. So that is way more important and will save your sanity. So I think. We people ask that on webinars when we are pitching our service. They say, Do we get you? And I used to say, Sure, I'll hop in and I'll help out because I wanted this because I'm like, Oh my God, yeah. whatever it takes to get the sale. And right. I say, No, you do not. You yeah. will get my team. They are trained by me and I will inform the strategy of the service. But no, I'm not jumping on every client service call. You're not asking me what color your podcast cover art should be. You're not doing it. I'm, you don't want me. I'm the pretty face that runs a company. Um, you don't want me editing your video or whatever it is. Right. Well, I know even we we're, I uh, had a, a meeting before our podcast right now, and we were just talking about that. Someone had emailed and they were looking for some response from our company. And they're like, well, we emailed Steve and we're like, well, there's your first mistake right there. Like the team is going to handle it's It's designed to handle that. Even I had a family thing once I had a cousin work with me and it was significant. It was a lot of zeros and he spent some money. And then uh, he was expecting that backdoor entry because it's family. And I made the mistake. This is years ago. I made the mistake of uh, allowing some of that because I'm like, oh yeah, it is family. Da, da. And then I realized in the situation, I'm so glad I realized because we were this close to probably like hating each other for the rest of our life because it wasn't going well. And I was like, what did I do? I created the system to treat everyone like it's family, to give them the best that I could. And I had to, I had to tell my cousin, you can't come through the back door. You got to come through the front door because I designed it to come through the front door. And I'm actually messing you up by allowing you to come some back way and not get the full service that my company can deliver. And it, and it fell on my shoulders too. I was taking a total, a whole bunch of stuff on because it was him and it would have been better to work with my staff because by the time I trained them, they were better than me than what I, that, you know, so, um, you know, so, so I guess I'll go, I got it. And I'll go, go you one better. It. I had go, the same uh, exact experience with my wife. Oh my God. So we market, okay, she, is, <laughs> she is a top 100. We got her, I got her to start mommy blogging a couple of years, a number of years ago. She is a top 100. We got that to the top 100 mommy blogs in 2018. Then I got her to turn into a book and we got an Amazon bestseller. And a couple months ago, I said, you should really have a podcast. And so I said, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. I'll be the account rep giant oh my god we have never had more fights in our marriage i should and i realized the other day when we were walking dark i'm like when she was yelling at me for something else and i said honey oh my god i just got an epiphany it's all my fault i should have never said we'll just sort of do it i should have had you 
have the go through the exact process in our management system with a yep. team delivering everything that our clients do because yep. you would have had the process they're happy with. You love the product, but you're unhappy with the process because I'm messing it up and not following what the system I built. And oh my God, that's the problem. And I'm so sorry. And we should start over. It's, it's like going back to what, how we used to run business. We're like yes. going back to the guy doing it all. And I yes. did the same. Oh my gosh. But I did not do it with my wife, luckily. But oh my gosh, I can see that. That is so hilarious. And sorry that it happened, but I'm so glad that you found it and then put her through the system. She's going to be so much happier. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> that is, uh, that is, uh, that is wild. So you brought up um, thanks for sharing that story. And, and, you know, this goes back to why the systems are there. So this actually just, you know, uh, is the topping on the cake right here that you, the systems, when you design them, they're made to have an amazing experience. And when you circumvent that for whatever reason, whether it's your wife, your cousin, I thought I was doing her a favor. I was right? going to make it happen faster. And, and it, 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 it's not backfired. Uh, yeah. And so follow the systems that we create because we created them for a reason. Um, I'm curious because a lot this comes up a lot too. And this is definitely part of the more business, more life, your morning routine. You said you have a personal development morning routine. Are you okay with sharing a little bit about that? Because um, it's a big deal. And I think in more business, more life, how you maintain yourself, right? Absolutely. So um, mine, uh, the personal coach I work, I've been working with for the last six months is Jarek Robbins, Tony's son, who's amazing. So our personal, my personal routine is I go downstairs. Um, I have a polar beat heart rate monitor. I track my heart rate variability, which I then send to him. I then use my Muse headset and I meditate um, and I send him the results out of that while I'm doing my affirmations and incantations. And then depending on which day of the week it is, I either go lift weights in my basement because um, I have a bow flex. And then I do, I write out the day that I, I how I want it to happen. Um, or I go to my martial arts dojo, train, then shower, then do diagram of the day and then get started. So there's Dude. some form of physical exercise yep. after the initial med uh, meditation um, to get my body up pumped before I start. That's, uh, that is, uh, and how long, thank you for sharing that. And how, about how long do you give yourself in the morning to do all that whole routine? Um, heart rate variability is two and a half minutes. Um, meditation is anywhere from 10 to 20, depending on the day. Yep. And then if I'm at my martial arts class, it's an hour and 15 minute class. I have to drive there and back. Yep. Um, luckily it's 10 minutes away. If I'm lifting weights in my ba basement, it's 20 to the routine I'm doing is 20 to 30 minutes. Nice. And then how long for the diagram? I'm curious. Like how did it, I bet that kind of varies depending on the complexity of the day or how does that, how does that, Yeah, go? but it's usually less than 10 minutes. Okay. I'm writing so, out everything that I want to happen based on what's planned for that day. Beautiful. And, uh, and then, then you, then after that, then you get off to, uh, you know, get it done. Go. So then, um, how, uh, how are you like during the day, like breaks, do you actually like earmark those or you kind of just let them happen when they happen? Like, how do you manage your, your own, your, yourself during the, the full day? I, um, when I'm working, I work, that's it. Um, I am the most productive person I, I, I know. Um, people always ask me how I get so much done. And I said, well, if I followed you around at your office all day, I'd figure out why you're not getting more done. <laughs> right. I, I'm not sitting at the water cooler talking to people. Right. Um, I am not doing anything other than working. So literally I can get a lot more done just because there are no distractions. I don't do anything else. Um, and I set in a lot of amount of time for each thing and it just magically has to get done by that amount of time or it doesn't get done. The timers are huge. That's I'm a big yes. suggester of that because if you give yourself all day to do something or you have no end time, then you will tend to take more time. So what Absolutely. kind of timer do you use? Uh, just getting specific again. What? Uh, just my phone. You, so you just use the clock. You're like, oh, I have 15 minutes for this task. You know and what time it, you I, I use the countdown timer app on, you know, that came with my iPhone. Yeah. I, yeah. Okay. That's, that's, uh, per and does that work when you're, <clears throat> I know I'm getting really detailed, but it helps people. Well, what do you, how do you do that? If it's a call, if you're like, okay, I'll so then you just watch the clock and know what time you have to get off. No, the it, it, the it timer beeps. Yeah. It beeps. And I say, okay, well, I, I, I 
set of, I, I will have something that goes off five minutes before I'm supposed to be done. And then I'll know, Hey, I should be wrapping up. And if not, if we can't, and I'll be like, sorry, we're done. Gotta go. Like I've had podcasts where I'm like, I asked you a question and that answer should have been in my mind three or four <laughs> more minutes. And you're still going. I'm like, well, I really appreciate it. We don't have time for the rest. Sorry. I mean, I yeah. like, for example, I had a podcast, right? I have seven today. You're one of them. And the wow. one I had right before this, I said, he's like, it's half an hour on the calendar, right? I said, yeah, but we're going to do five. We're going to end five minutes early because the recording's got to render. And I'm going to run to the bathroom before my podcast with Steve. Oh my God. There you go. So yeah, that, and I, I thank you for sharing that because it's so, uh, when you compartmentalize, you get more done. That's, I, I bet that's one of the that's biggest it. pieces. I'm sure there's more than one, but that's one of the biggest pieces. I guess, I guess let's, let me just ask what it, what would you say is the number one thing that allows you to have that level of productivity through the day? Is it the timer or don't is it something do, else? Yeah. Don't do anything other than work right. and work will expand mm -hmm. to fit the amount of time you give it. So if I've trained, I've trained my subconscious and my brain over and over every single day that you only get this much time. And it's amazing how much faster you get stuff done when you know it's got 30 minutes and that's it. Magically, you can pull it off. Yeah. If you give yourself, it's so funny if I don't tell new team members, if I don't indoctrinate them in this philosophy and they'll spend, I say, what did you do all day? Ah, I, I, I watched the training videos. I'm like, okay, it was an hour and a half. How'd you watch them for eight? Well, I watched it three times. I'm like, did you need to? Did you really need to? Or were you just trying to fill time yeah. of having to do something so that you got paid for those hours? I'm like, it doesn't really take that. So the in my team has a joke that there's the Seth definition of how long things should take and the real world version of how long <laughs> they take. But I Seth thinks everything takes 10 minutes. I will say, oh, editing that, which should take you 10 minutes. Yeah. And then Bruce, our president, will tell the staff member, no, it should really take about 30. But if you take any longer than that, he's going to be mad at you. But it doesn't really take 10 minutes because they'll look at him and be like, I can't get that done in 10 minutes, but yeah. I can. So I don't expect him to be me 80%. Yeah, that's that's 100% uh, <laughs> the, the case because uh, everyone, we have to realize, and you know, that we've done it for so long and you, and you can yes. always do things faster and give them space, but also turning basically what you've done is created a core philosophy that they can adapt to, you know, by holding the compartment of time instead of letting it be so loose where then that we lose so much. It's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's a big deal. And then, and then I'm curious then how do you end the day? You know, like, do you have a ritual to end the day or can you just like close the, the book of business and then turn right to your family, like in an instant and like shut it off. Cause you know, so many entrepreneurs are here, like, how do you shut it off? So you can really be in family time. Do you have, um, how do you, how do you deal with that? That I need to get better at that. So um, it used to be my three or four minute, our office building is like four minutes from me. So it used to be that four minute commute was my reset time, but because yeah. we're quarantined right now, I don't have, it's just walking downstairs. So I do need to take a couple minutes and reset or do something to make the mental switch. I do, but pre COVID it was the drive home. Got it. Yeah. And so then I would listen to something on the way home that would I, I would listen to some music that would change my emotional state and get me thinking about family time. Yeah. And then just, in, and then just enjoy uh, that family time. And do you have like a, um, cause it seems like you have so many systems. So I'm just curious, do, like if, if something does get deep in your mind, do you have like a system for that? So if you're home, you're at dinner, a big thought comes into your head, how do you deal with that? So you can get back to the family dinner. Do you have a tech? Just curious. Maybe you I will either write it. My wife knows when I jump up and go grab a journal or run to the laptop, it's because I'm writing something down. Yeah. Um, so that will work if it's something that's not right down. If it's something that's frustrating me, I have two different types of punching bags in the basement. There you go. It's, uh, you know, the writing down is the, is, is the key. You know, if I can just get it down and got so a brain dump and get it out of my head so I can look at it later. 
And that's why I kind of created a ritual for me, what worked. And it's, I know it's different for all of us, but right. Like having five uh, to 10 minutes before I call it plan tomorrow today. So like right at the end of the day, plan yeah. tomorrow today, like write down these key initiatives. And then still like how you have your morning routine and you're diagramming out the day, you can take those notes that you previously wrote down, but it helped me because if I didn't do that, I would still be carrying those extra notes that I didn't write down with me into the night yes. with my yes. family. You know, so it, uh, it, it, it helps. Um, I appreciate, I appreciate all of that. And then, you know, uh, planning is, uh, you know, all of this, look at what we're talking about. It's all planning, design, uh, systems, you know, it's all these things. And, and I do believe that life is by design. So I'm curious, like, how do you going uh, big again, before, as we, um, come to some of our last questions. What, what do you do about like the whole year? Do you like say, okay. And I know we're recording this during COVID. So like travel has been harder, but do you like set out the year and know when your family's going to do something? And then you kind of plan your business around that. Or how do you, uh, how do you do the big picture for your family? Um, so we, it's obviously COVID's eliminated travel for us anyway. So there right. isn't one. So it used to be, we would get Max's soccer schedule. So we knew where we were traveling for tournaments. Right. And we would see if there was someplace fun and we could build a day or a couple days on, go to the beach, go to a theme park. Um, we would get Ella's theater schedule. So we would know when we had to be here. Um, and then we would try and work around those things. I mean, pre-COVID, I would, I it, thankfully have slowed down. I mean, I was speaking at a conference or an event like every month. So yeah. we yeah. would have my travel schedule, our soccer travel schedule, and then try and fit stuff around that. And then, then you would map out if you wanted to have a vacation or a holiday around all of that. Correct. Yeah. We went to Universal last year. We went to Disney the year before. Um, so you kind of try to pick one big one a year. Is that kind of the game? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh that is, uh, that is, uh, a big, uh, a big deal. And I guess, you know, so, you know, if you were to, uh, bring this to like a first step, someone listening, uh, I kind of maybe know what you're going to say, but like, what, what do you think the first step, if they're running mad and doing all the things like you and I both sound like we did, like, what's the, the first step they should take? Figuring out what the system, I mean, what the services that needs to run without you so that you can have, you can build a system that someone else can run. Even if you don't have the money to hire someone now, if you can map out those steps so that eventually somebody else can do it, then you can serve a lot more people at a higher level. You know, and that's just it. You just said, what is the service? And, and going back to what you said a few minutes earlier, when you first met the person that helped you automate, they said, what's the one service that's either causing you the most grief or probably even which one's making you the most profit, what, however you indicate that, but you had to pick one. And I think that happens when people think, oh, I got to systemize my business. They start going, Oh, you know, I always say, I refer to it as like building a house. You don't put on your calendar, build house the next day, right. build house. No, you're going to like, uh, level the ground. Then you're going to frame up a foundation. Then you're going to pour a foundation. Then you're going to frame the outside. There's so many different things you do. So what I just heard in that was like, you know, pick the one thing. I know I'm saying it's like different way, but what I heard from you is like, what, what one thing are you going to work on first? Right. Is that? Yes. And, Absolutely. Uh, Start with one. Otherwise you'll get overwhelmed. Oh my gosh. It's just, uh, it's just wild. And then what was your, what was yours? Uh, just to see your, how do you pick which one to work on first? What would, what would be your suggestion on, on that? Um, well, it depends on whether it's, a, you're moving away from pain like I was, and you're picking the one that's causing you the most stress or the biggest problem, or you're moving towards pleasure and you're picking out of the one that has the most potential for the greatest profit. So it just depends on where you are in your business life right then. I was in a lot of pain and needed to solve that. Somebody else might be in someplace else. Right. And that is a great answer. What is it that you need? Do you need more cash? So which one is making you the most money or do you need uh, more pain relief? Which one's causing you the most grief? And then, and then focus and focus on that. Yeah. So, and I know you said uh, your next step is to get uh, marketing uh, firm that can help you. So you're not the only rainmaker. So I think that is your next step, but are there any other next steps for you? Like what's the vision ahead, you know, uh, for, for you, what's the next steps? 
Uh, we're working on high, uh, on a system for hiring that can run without me. Um, and then the marketing system and we need one more, we need to hire probably one more project manager and then hopefully I should be good. That's awesome. So then what, uh, just curious, then, then when you have all of that, what will having that do for you, Seth? Um, I'll probably work less and I will probably be, um, I'll spend time on, I mean, we can't travel. I mean, that depends on COVID, but I would say I would probably be home. I, I, I'd love to cut my hours a week from, let's say 40 to 30 to 20 to 30, maybe. Yeah. And then that would be working on the vision then. Cause I think if you, if I heard what you said, right, when you let these next things go that you just said, then you'd be able to just focus on the next vision of the company. So you'd spend Correct. like 20 hours working on that. And yes. then, and then, so is there anything, do you see it's going to be like, are you going to go for the new or do you want to go back to old things? I think you mentioned music and stuff like that. Are you going to want to like you know, do that more again? Or like, do you have any, or you don't even know yet? Like when you get the free time, you don't even know what you're going to do with it yet. No, I've been doing pretty good. I, uh, over COVID, I have uh, been teaching myself through apps to play guitar, nice. electric guitar. So that's been fun. Um, but I, I, I I've been, I, I started out before I got into marketing. I was in financial services. I was a professional magician. So I've been picking, I've been doing more of that. Um, just as a purely intellectual pursuit to keep my skills up. Um, I probably, I mean, I probably do more of both, but um, I'm pretty happy at the moment. That's beautiful, brother. That's beautiful. And I think this will be my last question, unless I have a pop-up follow-up, but I'm, I'm curious then uh, if you're, uh, if, if this was the last time someone were to hear or speak with you, uh, and I always love to ask this question, like if you were to give one piece of advice to a C-level executive or an entrepreneur, and this is the one thing that you could give them, what would be your number one best piece of advice that you would like to share? Okay, so I think it might be different. So the C-level executive is... How do they, I mean, maybe it's the same. How do they get a system that their team can run so that they don't have to work as much and they can get better results? Yeah, you know what? It'd be the same for the entrepreneur. Build a system that can run without you so that you can have more business and more life at the same time. That's it. I mean, I think that's what we're doing in business. You know, I think Seth, you know, the thing that's uh, hits me in the heart is like how people work. One of my friends uh, was able to retire early and he has some property in the Caribbean on an Island and he was getting off the plane and he noticed everyone was waiting to get off the plane. And he's like, what's going on? And they like, let him off. It was like, he said it was almost everyone. It was like shocking to him. And then he, you know, how you go down the jetway to get off the plane. It was like lined with wheelchairs. And he's like, Steve, I kid you not. I looked back and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm the youngest one on this plane. And uh, he, he said, I'm so glad that I was able to walk off the plane. So many people wait to retire when they don't even have any body energy left. And wow. so I think, you know, that, and that just hit home. And, and the way you're just saying it right now is just, you know, what you created. I just want to congratulations to you. And then this whole story and just painting another picture. It's always great to hear more of us doing these good things so that it's more believable for everyone else, right? That they, everyone can do this. It's, uh, you know, it's I, you come from financial services and got into marketing. I went to film school and started creating 30 second spots, got into marketing. And then we came to the same thing. We got to systemize what we're doing so we can have the life that we want. And, um, and so it's beautiful, brother. Thank you so much for sharing your stories with us today. My pleasure. It's been, a, it's been a lot of fun. It's beautiful. Well, uh, thanks everyone for listening. And as always, I say, choose gratitude and create freedom. And, and Seth, you, uh, you said, uh, they can check it out as clone yourself.com. Clone yourself software.com. Thank you for clarifying that. And we'll put it in the show notes as well. Clone yourself software.com. That is uh, amazing. Thanks so much for sharing. Thanks for having me. Thanks for listening to the More Business, More Life podcast. I hope you got value. And if you did, we have so many more things for you at stevenopleton.com. You'll be able to connect with us on social media. We are active. You can ask us questions. And then on top of that, I want to give you a really big gift. And it truly is. We want to give so much value. We have an offering. It's a program called 
clear path to customers. It's the same way that we attract wow clients and only working with the right people, the people we want to. And it's transformed my business into millions more in revenue with the right people and my clients. And we're doing it absolutely free. So you can go to stevenoplaton.com and grab that. You just gotta put, put in your information and we'll send it to you promptly. And that again is on stevenoplaton.com. Dot com. I look forward to having you on the next show. Until then, remember, choose gratitude and create freedom.